fucking laugh. The dreams indeed coming true for some young fans here in Chicago. One of the big things that happens in advance of the Big Ten kickoff luncheon. Fans get a chance to get autographs from some of their favorite coaches and Jim Harbaugh, as you might expect, the Michigan head coach, a very popular figure here in Chicago. We're joined by a few of his players right now, including defensive lineman Maurice Hurst, Mike McCray, linebacker Mason Cole, offensive lineman. Gentlemen, welcome to Chicago. Great to have you with us. I want to, though, uh, leave this city and go to another big international city, and that is Rome. There's been so much buzz about the trip that you guys took in April. What was the best memory that you took away from that? And Maurice, I can start with you, and we can go down the line. Um, I mean, the best memory for me was just getting to immerse ourselves in that culture and get to hear a different language and, you know, get to see the Coliseum. I mean, that was that was amazing. You get to see it in all the Gladiator movies. And, right. You know, it was just something that was really nice for us to see and kind of see where, you know, football kind of kind of came from and that whole right. idea of, you know, a stadium and having coming from that to 100,000 at the big house. And how about the fact that when you're at the Coliseum and you, you like walk around the corner and there it is, right? And it's right in the middle of the city and you got people just kind of driving around it, right? I mean, it's just there. And that, that was what, I remember that just kind of blowing me away the first time I ever saw it. Like this notion that these things are so ancient, but they are such a part of, of the city. You know, it's not as set apart as you might think it would be. Right, you know, we walked right past, when we rode up, we could see it from about a mile away, right? You know, it's crazy how big it was, and right. it's still up to this day. Uh, it was a great experience overall, especially going to the Coliseum and seeing all the other history as well. You know, uh, it was a great time for our team, great team bonding and everything. So it was really great. What did you learn that you didn't know, Mike? I didn't know the Coliseum held fifty thousand people. Really? That's a lot back then. Yeah, it is. Like now, yeah. it's probably not, but right. back then, it was probably a lot. Yeah, now it's a small Big Ten stadium. But yeah, right. back then, no, it's incredible, right? I mean, it's incredible to think that that long ago, they could build these edifices that have stood the test of time. Really yeah. amazing stuff. How about for you, Mason? Yeah, I think just the whole trip, being able to go over there as a team, um, you know, having opportunities that we would never have if we weren't playing football for Michigan. I think that's what just made the trip so special for for everyone, and just just being there together together as a team, and uh, being able to to hang out and do things as a team, paintball, uh, the walking tours through the city, um, all the big Italian style meals. I think those are memories that we'll have for a lifetime. As you guys are well aware, there is a fascination with your head coach nationally. <laughs> so you have spent a lot of time with him. You've spent time with him in informal settings like that one on vacation, right? On a, an educational vacation, but a vacation nonetheless. Give us a sense of one thing that you know about Jim Harbaugh that the rest of the country doesn't know. That wouldn't be, you know, embarrassing, but just, just something where you've gained some insight into him that the rest of us don't, don't have the chance to get. Uh, I don't know. I, the one thing I do know is he is so competitive and, and so willing to coach and be hands-on that, you know, he's pulled hamstrings in practice before running routes. Um, you know, I think he just pulled a, a hip flexor in a, a softball game with his family. Um, I think that's something that a lot of people don't see and just how hands-on he is and willing to do whatever it takes to show his players uh, how to do it. For you, Mike? Yeah, kind of like Mason said, uh, you see that he's a great father, you know. He's always with his kids. He always brings them in the facility and everything like that. And uh, he's always around his dad, his wife, you know. Uh, you know another thing, he's a, he takes care of the players, you know. We need something, he'll be there for us. And that's one thing we all love about him. Maurice? Uh, probably just the fact that he wears cleats everywhere. Um, he'll be at the dinner table with us, eating, eating with us in cleats. And, I mean, he's just everywhere. He's, he's ready to play. I mean, it's just it's crazy how, how he just locates himself around the building, just running around in his cleats. Have you ever asked him why? I think he's just always ready to go. I mean, it's just one of those things where, you know, he's always ready for any sort of, you know, running or jogging or any sort of football activity. He's always ready. Let's get into your team a little bit. And one of the big narratives surrounding this Michigan team is how inexperienced you are, right? I mean, technically, you are the only returning starter on the defense, although there are certainly other players who have played major roles, yourself included. As you guys look towards this season with a team that is is as inexperienced as yours, I know internally you feel good about this group. Tell us why, despite the fact that we're going to see a lot of guys who haven't seen a lot of playing time. The young guys are really impressive. Um, they've been 
been impressing me all off season. Um, they all have come along. They've all bought in, and it's something that you see more and more. I feel like since we've been here every year, the freshmen are are ready to play right away. They don't need red shirts. They're they're here for three years, maybe four, but a lot of them are ready to go right away. And that's something that you see. It's kind of a culture change for us is seeing these guys so ready to play right when they get into school. Who in particular has stood out to you among the younger guys? I mean, Rashawn obviously is, has stood out a lot. I mean, Donovan Peoples-Jones is physically one of the best guys that we have in our team right now just from, you know, times and verts and all that type of th- type of stuff. But, um, you know, a lot of the younger guys are, are coming in so prepared and so ready to go. How does that impact your role, Mike, I'm being the guy who nominally at least is the only returning starter? Um, you know, kind of makes my role a little bit bigger, you know, try to become more vocal a little bit. We have to be a little bit more vocal, you know, on and off the field, you know, that I have a question about school or just life, period. You know, I've been in college five years, like I have, you know, I've experienced some things and uh, just want to be there for them, you know, on and off the field. and. I think they'll be ready for the season. I know they will, and we just have to put it on the field. We've talked a lot about the genius of Jim Harbaugh, and I think people have certainly bought into that narrative nationally. What's the genius of Don Brown? He's a madman. A dude. <laughs> How so? A dude. What does that, okay, what does it mean when you say he's a dude? <laughs> it's just his thing, and I'm calling him his thing. Like he's a dude. Okay. Well, he, he calls you a dude. Yeah, so I'm calling him a dude. And as a dude, that's a term of endearment, it's I'm just, assuming. It, yep. means, it means you're like, you're a guy, you can play. Exactly. All right. That's a positive thing. You want to be a dude. What what else? What, what Where's the... Why is this guy so good, no matter where you plug him in? He's never afraid. He's He said if we get beat in a blitz, we'll call blitz the next play. He's not, he's not afraid of any offense, any man, any opponent that we have. And he has that energy that, you know, we're going to be the number one defense and we're going to call plays like we're the number one defense where every single call he makes is is for us to win the game and um you know he's just not afraid that's why i call him a madman because he'll he'll call anything any time of the game mason how about on your side of the ball and particularly your position group you know last year when you look at the games that you guys didn't win it seemed like the common theme was you really didn't run the ball that well right. like the offensive line didn't have your best days so Give me a sense of how you feel like that group has come together with that in mind. Yeah, again, just like the defense, just a, a really young and talent, talented offensive line. And um, a lot of guys that haven't played, but I think guys that have bought into the system and now have been in the same offense for going on the third year now and just really bought into what we want to be. And um, I think that's what we want to be. We want to be an offensive line that runs the ball well. And um, we have at times in the past, but we... Our goal now is just be more consistent at it and do it every single time, every single down. How does the fact that you guys lost three of your last four impact your mentality coming into the year, Mason? Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for, for these young guys to play now. And, and really, it's not even young guys. There's guys that have been uh, third, fourth year guys now that have been sitting behind you know players that have played for three or four years. And um, you know it's, they're ready to go and they, they're willing to go. And uh, you know, I can't wait for camp to see everyone compete and see how, be- how much better they get. You talk about heading into camp, and you have a really good game to start off the season. I mean, an elite opponent in Florida. It's a little bit different maybe than a, a traditional opener. How does that impact your mentality coming in, the notion that, hey, right away, we're going to have to have our A game? I think it just comes with, with making sure the freshmen know that they don't have time to be freshmen. Our first game's a, a, a national stage, and we're playing a great team and a team that's supposed to be a dark horse for the playoffs. So, those guys just have to be ready to go and there's no you can't just take plays off and there's no bumps in the road you gotta you gotta get the playbook down early and, and just be ready to roll right away how about from your point of view mike from my point of view you know you just gotta prepare like you always do we probably will throughout throughout the week and through camp preparing for the game and not changing who we are and do what we do and uh just going out there having fun playing together and giving all we got Mike, I want to ask you this. You were one of the players who raised his fist during uh, the national anthem of a game last year. This was a huge national story with, with Colin Kaepernick. Why did you feel that that was something that you wanted to join into? into and, and what was kind of the message you were looking um, to convey? It was just something that I believe in. And uh, what, what in particular, like, what was the message you were trying to convey? I was trying to trying to help, you know, spread the word of what Kaepernick was trying to get out there, you know, and... Uh, I believe in what he's trying to do, and I don't see a problem with it. And I feel like me being in college is also an opportunity 
for me to spread spread that like try to help really and I have no regret of doing it and I didn't mean any harm by it or anything you know just trying to spread light on what he's trying to spread out what was the conversation like with coach Harbaugh when you discussed that you know that was did you talk about it with him beforehand or was it more a discussion you had afterwards? Um, no we didn't talk about it beforehand we talked about it in a group chat the, during that week and I told him that I was doing it and they can join me if they want and afterwards he talked about it the next day and he supported us of course that's who he is so right. and that's 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 really it what do you guys think in terms of having a platform and a voice? How important is that to you as a college athlete and, and what some of your teammates did? I mean, it means everything. Being able to use our platform to help, you know, promote a cause that we stand for and for equality in all forms of light. And, I mean, it just means everything to be able to use this, this platform that we have even for something else as far as, like, helping out children or, you know, going to elementary school and reading to them and, I mean, just using this platform to do good in the world, and I think that's something that, you know, we owe to everyone just because of who we are and, you know, that we wear the Block M every Saturday. A great mentality to have. Maurice, Mike, Mason, thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. We look forward to watching the Wolverines in action coming up.